Hello? Yes, we missed a call from this number. Hey, Chris, this is Jay. <laughs> oh, hi, Jay. How are you today? I'm doing good. Um, it, your phone was breaking up. That's why I, um, I couldn't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you good. Um, I have a question. Like, well, I, the, you know the house that I've been dealing with? Mhm. All right. So, like, the owner, um, you know, he was he had intentions on um selling it by January, but um, his wife got sick, and so their plans now are to um leave the 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 state in 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 the summertime. So it actually gave me a little more time. You know, I told you it um had some work to my it got it need a little little bit of work. Basically, mainly the the back door where it looked like someone tried to break into it, and that part ain't fixing. So I'm I'm guessing my question is like, do I need to go ahead and get that fixed, or you know just um let the tenants know that you know it will be it'll be rent to own as is, and they would have to get everything repaired. Or how, rent how you to own, that? yes, rent to own as is, exactly. Don't repair anything. Do not waste your money, you know, unless it's something major that has to be done, like, you know, to keep the house secure or something like that. But uh, it sounds like, you know, as long as the door can lock and everything and nobody's just breaking in it or anything, you should be able to yes. put it out on a rent to own as is. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I feel like that's the only part I, I, I need to take care of because, like someone can, the person, whoever it was trying to break into the house, they they couldn't get in, but they messed the door up um, on the inside. So like on the inside, the door can't lock. So I, I feel, I, I just think that it, it, I don't think nobody would want to, well, coming from me, okay, you know, you have to look at, you have to look at situations like would you live in, would you move in with the house all being, being you know, as is like this? So I, you know, that house it is in really good condition. Um, only thing is that door. Like when they tried to break that, when they tried to break in, like the door, like the um side of the door, it came off and like it won't lock. It won't. It'll close, but it won't lock. But if you, it's a screen door, um, up to it. And if if you're trying to come in from the outside, you can't get in. But from the inside out, like you can't, you can't, um, you can't lock and you can't close it. If that makes sense. How you much does it me. cost to get fixed? Um, it doesn't cost that much. You know, just get it fixed. That's not, that's not a problem as long as you know you know you're gonna close on the deal. It doesn't matter. You know, it's it's a hundred dollars or less. You know, it's nominal money when you look at the big picture of it. I mean, if that's what it takes to get the deal done, if it makes you feel better, do it. You know, because in reality, it still comes back down to whoever buys it. You know, it's if they like it, right. not if you like it. Because if they can handle it, they might look at it and say, "Oh, I'll fix that." My brother's a locksmith, or "Oh, this is easy for me." You don't know. You know, you got to let the marketplace tell you. You know, I try not okay. to answer. You know, I don't try to think for people. I just present options and let them tell me what they can do and go from there. Because mm-hmm. you might, you know, be putting your own. You know, just like when you put it out to a rent-to-own buyer. Instead of saying, "Oh, mm-hmm. I need five thousand down," why would I say a number first? You ask them what is, what can you put down. They might tell you twenty right. or thirty thousand dollars down, and you you put your putting yeah, your money in a low number. So don't say no numbers. <laughs> don't don't you know, just present options yeah, and let them tell you. <laughs> that's what I done learned from you and Legrand. Like not not don't speak on no number. Like just you know just ask them what 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 can they put down and and what how much can they um pay a, a month for rent. Yeah, it's it's basic, simple questions. They're going to all ask you this first, but, you know, I, I still ask them. You know, it, it comes back to they need to say a number when the smoke clear. We don't do, you know, the only number we saying is a price. You know, if you know you want, I don't know, 100000 for this house, that's the price. All this other stuff, you know, you submit your application and we go from there. I've got a simple mm-hmm. little one-page document I created that just, you know, or they can just tell me on the phone. It's easier, you know, but. If it makes them feel better, here's a little pre-qualification application. How much do you have to put down for a down payment? How, what is the most you can pay on a monthly rent? How soon are you looking to move? You know, stuff like that. The basic mm-hmm. two or three questions, and uh, once you get those answers, you can make a decision. Now, if somebody get on okay. the phone with you and say, yeah, I got 20K down, they might get your attention a little more than one of these guys rolling up. Well, we'll go to $1,000. 
man, get off my phone. You ain't talking about nothing. thousand dollars to get into this house is not happening. <laughs> You know what I mean? And you're going to get a lot of those tire kickers. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. They don't mean any harm, but you just have to identify them yourself prior to putting them in the house or even going through any of the process any further from that. Right, right. So um, another question. I know, like, I be I be having stuff, and, like, as soon as I get off the phone, I'm like, damn, like, I, I need to ask them that. Like, um, okay, say, for instance, all right, you know, um, we close on the house um, at the end of this month, the beginning of February. Um, so you, I know you said it's two months out, allow him to continue to pay the the mortgage. So that'd be like March, April, start paying it. I mean, I should be able to get someone in. So let me, wait, before I even, before I even say what I was going to say, like what happens if you don't find nobody up until that period? You'll have to take that payment, but you'll find somebody. The demand is higher than the supply. There's more people that want to do a rent to own out here than there is to do rent. More people that want to buy a house that don't have the credit, they have cash. And you're coming into tax mm-hmm. season now, as long as there's government shut down all right. that long. But people got money, believe me. You'll find you'll be surprised. It's a whole other market that most people don't tap into at all. You know, there's it's very little competition on rent to owns. I mean, if somebody got five or ten or twenty thousand dollars just sitting and they want to move into a house, they qualify. You don't even care about their credit. I mean, you can care personally, but I don't care. Can you make the payment one, or do you have a healthy enough down payment so if everything goes wrong, I can get you up out of here, and I'm not going to take a loss? You see what I'm saying? So it's not mm-hmm. – you, you won't have any problems. So it's just part of your offer to your seller there. So say, yeah, we're going to agree to this price. Uh, we'll go ahead and close this thing next week. As soon as title clear, go close it. Don't wait because you want to close the deal so you can protect the deal. But you you just mm-hmm. put it into your – into your uh your agreement with him, I start making payments on March 1, or I start making payment on April 1, you know, some date. It's vacant now, right? Yes. Okay, because if it wasn't vacant, you would say something a little different. You would say, we start making payments X number of days after vacated. So you don't have a house with somebody sitting in there, and you don't, you know, you can't show it or you can't do what you need to do. But since it's already mm-hmm. vacant, you just pick a date out in the future. Say we start making payments on March 1 or we start making payments on April 1. You know, March 1 should be good. But, you know, if you feel better, if you feel like he can do the further out you give him, the better. Because if you get a tenant buyer next week, you get to take that rent in all those months for free. That's your money. You see what I'm saying? So it's all about the yeah. agreement. But that's part of your um, your negotiations with them. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do it. We'll do all the other stuff we, you know, talked about. However, we'll start making payments on March 1. It'll give you a little bit of time, but, you know, unless it's like a rough area or something, it shouldn't take you that long. It takes just a few weeks normally. If You you know, once you get some good marketing out there, good arrow signs and little other stuff I'll show you about when you get to that point. But it's not that hard to find a tenant buyer in reality. Okay, I just I think I'd be overthinking it. That's all it is. Like, yeah, yeah, it's I, kind I, of scary, I, but you got the house. So you, once you got the house, you got the power. Until then, we just – thinking about it or planning about it. That's why they always teach Mm -hmm. close the deal, protect the deal, because somebody can flake out, oh, well, I got to summertime. You don't need to summertime. You get the house, and you still Mm -hmm. got, you got the control, and you don't, you get that seller out of your way. When that seller's out of your way, you can do whatever you want to with the house. You can Airbnb it. You can do, it's your house. You see what I'm saying? You got the power then, but you know you want to put it out on a lease option because you'll get that money, but still, you got Mm -hmm. options at that point. You have zero options when you don't own the house. You still got to go through the seller and ask for permission, and can I do this, and will you do that, and please, uh, master boss, give me that. I'm not doing all that. Close the deal, especially if it's just, a, you know, $1,000 in closing costs or whatever it is. Close the deal as soon as possible, and then go ahead and set it up to, uh, you know, start your marketing for your uh, tenant buyer. You can actually start marketing for that already. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I, that's what I was going to do. Yeah, you mean you're going to start marketing for that now. So you can start getting building up your buyers list. That's a different type of buyers list. See, this is completely different from wholesaling. Wholesaling, you deal with people trying to be cheap and trying to be, you know, oh, I need a deal, and it's all about the numbers and all that. With this stuff here, with rent to own, it's not always just about the numbers. It's about do they want the house. If they see the house, they go look at it. Oh, man, I love this house. I can paint this, and I can do that, and I can fix this and make this look like this. Great. Your baby, how much you got to put down? Ten grand, good enough. Twenty grand, good enough. Thirty grand, sold. Get them in there. You see what I'm saying? Look how much money you get right back <laughs> yeah. just that quick on the front end. That ain't counting your passive cash flow while you wait. That ain't counting your money on the back end. That's just the front end money. It's like a whole mm-hmm. other monster. So I would okay. say go ahead okay. and um, get the deal closed ASAP. 
get that title in escrow and you know you have a title company there right that uh that can do the deal yeah. right yeah. yeah, go ahead and get that thing in there and get the try to get it closed as soon as possible. Next week, if possible, close the deal, but then you work on still promoting the market and get your tenant buyer. You can start that already, too. Okay. So yeah, right. If he already yeah. agreed to it, you know, you, you, you can start marketing for that because you, you could double close it if you're good enough. You might have a buyer at the exact same time you're closing that deal. You see what I'm saying? And use their funds for it if you're good, but that yeah. is not required. You know, that is an option, but, like, mine was a week apart. I had to front the money. But it didn't really, you know, it didn't hurt me. But it was like, man, it's mm-hmm. scary. Like, you think, like, man, what if I do this? What if it mess up? What if? But you got a free house, yeah. <laughs> you know, or you got a house for a couple thousand dollars. You're not going to get a house anywhere for a couple thousand dollars anywhere in America, other than this type of way yeah, that I'm right. aware of. Yeah, that's so what I So you still got the I'll power. Like, yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I think I'd be stuck on the uh, what if a little too much. But, you know, it, it, you, you, you never know until you do it. Oh uh, yeah. Well, you know, but like I said, you got the house. Once you got the house, you did. That 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 separates all the other craziness. I got the power now because I don't need to go through that seller and beg him. And you think I can do this? It's already negotiated with them. You close the deal with them ASAP. They out of your way, and then it's your baby to deal with at that point until you get a tenant buyer in there, or you know, do another option. But I would say go ahead and you know put that rent to own on out there. Start marketing for that ASAP. All right. So did I you get that? Uh, phone, did. Did did you get that phone call sister thing I sent you? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, because you need to get yeah, a phone number dedicated specifically for tenant buyers. Cause you want to go straight to voicemail. You don't want to be taking those calls because it'll overwhelm you. Them people will be blowing your phone up all day and night. That's why you need them phone systems set up. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, you need a phone number dedicated to do nothing but co- you know for tenant buyers. Whenever you're talking with them about any house you get now or in the future. This is the number you call so that, you know, you have a better way of tracking who's calling and it comes in straight to a voicemail because you don't want to be talking to all these people because they ask so many questions when you already answered it on the post, which really you have questions for them, if anything, but they want to sit up and question you. Well, how much do I really need to put down and all that? No, how much do you have to put down? Well, you know, because people who got money, they don't talk like that. They, You know, when they got money, they right. wow, yeah, I got 20 G's, man. I'm going to drop 30 G's in your lap. Say, oh, all right, my kind of person right here. Come on in. Did you go and see the house? Make sure you like it, and we'll work it out from there. That's the next step. You know, once they, you know, that's how I did it. You know, I qualify them. They got money. Well, take a look at the house. Mm-hmm. You ain't got no money. What are you looking at it for? But, you know. Right. Any other questions? No, that's all, man. If I do, you know, I'll hit you or, or, or tell, tell you give me a call, you know. All right. No problem. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right. 